Good morning. Welcome to all members and guests. We welcome you to worship this morning at First Saint English Lutheran Church. We wish a happy Father's Day to all of the fathers, grandfathers, and other father figures in our lives. My name is Christy Ehrenberg. This is my husband, Darren. Our children, Kelsey and Nathan, are over here, and we will be leading you in worship this morning. Special thanks to Terry, Dan, Marina, and Dean for assisting with service this morning as well. For our announcements, we want to wish congratulations to Samantha Lindahl and Tony Clafton on the birth of their daughter, Elliot May Clafton, who was born on June 10th. With the revised stay-at-home orders that are currently in place, we will not be hosting worship at the church for the foreseeable future. We will continue to record the services, and they will be shared on Facebook Live, uh, posted to our website, and broadcast on the KDIO and Channel 3 stations at the regular times. There is a committee who will be discussing when and how we might start moving towards in-person services. If you or your family would like to assist with leading worship services, any parts of them, uh, please contact Mari at the church office and let her know of your interest and in what you'd be willing to do. As a reminder, our congregational meeting will be held today at 10.30 a.m. Um, the details to join that meeting are in the link, which can be found on the Facebook page or on the church website, which will be posted immediately following worship today. We ask that when you sign in for that meeting, that you list all of the first names of the voting members of your household who will be joining you so that each of you can be counted towards our quorum. There will be an endowment committee meeting this Wednesday, June 24th at 5 p.m. in the church basement. Also, the finance work group will be meeting Wednesday as well at 5.45 p.m. in the church basement. Please plan to use social distancing practices for those meetings. Today's KDIO, KDIO broadcast is sponsored in honor of Lois and Marvin Knopp on their anniversary from their daughters Cindy and Pam and their families. The Board of Stewardship would like to sincerely thank our loyal stewards for your financial support during these times of crisis. Even though we cannot worship together in person, our ministry continues and looks to our community through thick and thin. Your commitment to the church is greatly appreciated. Every amount helps. We are praying for revival. Thank you. If you need pastoral needs, please contact the parish nurses. This week's contact is Neva Foster. Her number is 320-305-4964. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share the peace with those who you are worshiping with or send a greeting on Facebook. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the eternal voice from heaven, the anointed and beloved one, the spirit moving over the waters. Amen. Please join us in the song of mercy. Pray for the people.
As we approach the mystery of God, let us come in confession, trusting the love of Christ, crucified and risen. O God, who searches us and knows us, you have shown us what is good, but we have looked to other lights to find our way. We have not been just in our dealings with others. We have chosen revenge over mercy. We have promoted ourselves instead of walking humbly with you. With what shall we come before you? Forgive us our sins and show us your salvation in the face of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved our God, you have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, poured out for you in the faithfulness of Jesus. Receive the promise of baptism. You are God's child. Your sins are forgiven. Rejoice and be glad, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And now we'll have our song of praise, Rescuer. The prayer of the day. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
The reading can be found on page 559 of the Old Testament in the Pew Bibles. Jeremiah accuses God of forcing him into a ministry that brings him only contempt and persecution. Yet Jeremiah is confident that God will be a strong protector against his enemies and commits his life into God's hands. A reading from Jeremiah, the 20th chapter, beginning with the 7th verse. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then holding it in, and I cannot. And within me there is something like a burning fire sh shut up in my bones. I am weary, weary with, hold, with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him, and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. The word of the Lord. The reading, the reading can be found on page 119 of the New Testament in the Pew Bibles. In baptism, we are incorporated into the reality of Christ's death. Our lives in the present are marked and shaped by his crucifixion, just as our lives in the future will be marked and shaped by his resurrection. A reading from Romans, the sixth chapter, beginning with the first verse. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we, how can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by, bap by, our, by baptism into death. So, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our, self was that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might, not, we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. We'll now have the anthem, You Raise Me Up.
We will now do our children's message. My name is Kelsey, and this is my brother Nathan. And today we're going to do a little bit of a science experiment. Please have your parents help you if you want to try this experiment too. Here's what you'll need. A clear container of water, yellow food coloring, bleach, and an eyedropper. The first step is to fill your container with water. Be sure that your container is clear so that you can see inside. This water represents us and our hearts. Next, add two drops of food coloring. We found that yellow food coloring works the best. Then stir that around. This food coloring represents sin. Sin can be things like being mean to someone or telling lies. Those are bad things. As you can see, when we added the color, all of the water turned yellow. When we sin, it changes us and our hearts. It may make us feel sad if we hurt someone or feel guilty if we don't do the right thing. Next, we're going to add a dropper full of bleach and stir it around. The bleach represents Jesus. When you've added enough bleach, the color will disappear. This is exactly what Jesus does. When we sin, we need to pray to Jesus and ask him for forgiveness. Jesus died on the cross so that we can be forgiven. When we ask Jesus for forgiveness, he will come into our hearts and make the sin go away, just like the bleach took the color out of the water. Now if we sin again, like adding another drop of food coloring and mixing it in, the color will disappear again because Jesus lives in our hearts. And if the color doesn't go away right away, we can always add more bleach, just like we can always pray and ask for forgiveness again. We should try not to sin, and we should try to be kind to everyone. But if we make mistakes, we can always ask Jesus to come in and clean the sin out of our hearts. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross so that we can ask for forgiveness. Please come and live in our hearts and clean out our sin. Amen. We will now have the gospel acclamation, He Keeps Me Singing. Holy Gospel, according to Matthew, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 24th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. 
A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the household Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to, get a, to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Thanks. to you, O Christ. And now, we will be presenting a skit called, Don't Worry. It's about a conversation between four disciples as they embark on a long journey. We sure have to walk a long ways. What happens if our sandals wear out? Where are we going to find the money to buy new ones? And what about our cloaks? Each of us only has one. What happens if a cloak gets a hole in it? Weren't you sons of thunder listening to the master today? Didn't he tell us not to worry about what we would wear? Didn't he remind us that the flowers of the field do not have, have to shear sheep or spin wool to weave their yarn into clothes? That's right. Even Solomon, the richest king Israel has ever known, didn't have clothing as beautiful as the way God clothes the flowers. Right. I wish you two would listen to what the master says instead of always worrying. Besides, if you want to worry about something, worry about food. It's getting late and we're nowhere near any town. How are we, gonna get, how are we going to fill our bellies tonight? That's you, right to the core, Peter, always worried about your belly. When have you ever gone hungry since being with the master? But you still worry about food. If you're going to be like that, go back to fishing. At least I had an honorable profession before joining Jesus. I wasn't a lousy tax gatherer working, working for the Romans. Knock it off, Peter. You may not have been a tax gatherer before you met Jesus, but you weren't the best person in the country. How many fights did you get into over nothing? Besides, you weren't any better than me. You don't listen any better than I do to what the master says. Didn't he tell us today not to worry about food? They've got you there, Peter. Remember what he said about the birds? God doesn't let them starve. He takes care of them. He even talked about how much, value, how much more valuable we are than those birds. He said, five sparrows are sold for a few pennies. Trust a tax collector to know the price of everything. Better than only knowing how to scaling fish and fix nets. Would you two stop bickering? How do you think Jesus would feel if he heard the two of you? Keep it up, and you'll make the Pharisees look good. What do you mean? Don't they say one thing and then do another? That makes them hypocrites. You two are acting exactly the same way. Saying Jesus is your master and then behaving the way you do. It's disgusting. Worrying and fighting over every little thing, when only the important things to worry about is what's going to happen to us and our families, being separated for so long. How will everyone survive? Are we doing the right thing or not? 
Maybe Philip needs a taste of his own medicine. A little reminder of the master's words. What are you two going on about? Should we explain it to him, Peter? Sure, you do it. You're the educated man. You know bigger words. Thank you. Anybody could explain this. Remember Jesus asking, if a child was hungry and asked his father for a piece of bread, would that father give a child a, a stone that looked like bread? And if the child asked for a piece of fish, would the father give the child a snake that is not to be eaten? And if earthly fathers who sin are kind to their children, how much more kind is our Father in heaven, who knows what we need even before we ask it? Okay, so I'm not perfect either. I guess we all need to stick close to Jesus to understand what he says and put his words into practice. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our world is a nation in a time, our world and our nation is in a time of great turmoil. We are facing many challenges right now, from the worldwide pandemic, to riots um, related to racial inequalities and injustices, to our own daily struggles and challenges within our families and within ourselves. In times of struggle, it's easy to get discouraged. These problems can seem too great for us to tackle and resolve. We can let our fear paralyze us, leaving us to watch helplessly from the sidelines. For others, it may stir up strong emotions of anger and frustration, and they may choose to channel those emotions into unhealthy ways, such as criticizing others or speaking harshly of others, or maybe even allowing it to lead us to violence or other destructive outlets. When we are faced with obstacles that seem too great for us, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and afraid. We are often too quick to try to approach these obstacles with our own knowledge and strength. However, without God, these obstacles most likely are too great for us to conquer. God says in Jeremiah that we are to trust in the Lord and look to him in all times of trouble and fear. God will always provide uh, what we need, and only God can give us the strength to overcome our fears and continue to live our lives in the face of turmoil. In the skit, the characters were worried about everything, worried about their shoes and their clothing lasting, uh, worried about having enough food and leaving their families behind. This worry turned them against each other, and they began to mock and criticize each other. Does this sound familiar? The fear made them worry and made them hypocrites, much like the Pharisees were, where they say Jesus is their master, but don't fully trust that the master will provide for them. Our challenge as Christians today is much the same. It's to not get caught in the trap of saying how much we believe in God and that he will always protect us. But then when we actually face times of trial, our first reaction is often to worry and to be fearful and not live in the faith that we have been professing. God charges us to have the faith of a child, a faith that believes we are in good hands and will be protected and will be delivered. We are to be reminded that God will always provide. It may not always be what we want, but it will be what God knows that we need. God didn't promise us a life without trials, but he promised to carry us through those trials when we seek his guidance and follow where he's leading us. Verse 13 of Jeremiah chapter 20 says, Sing to the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. May we have the faith to believe that promise, not only when things are going well, but especially when we're struggling and need to believe in that promise the most. In this next skit, the Israelites have finally completed their 40-year journey and have arrived at the outskirts of the land of Canaan, which was promised to them by God. Two faithful spies must confront their fears 
as they observed great obstacles of defeating the Canaanites to claim their promised land. These two spies, just like us, have a choice to make. Will they live in fear or will they live in faith? Well, isn't Canaan everything God said it would be? That it is, and then some. Then I say, we go in and take it. What are we waiting for? For one thing, our knees to stop shaking. Caleb, didn't you see the size of those Canaanites? Those dudes have been taking their vitamins. They weren't so big. Are you kidding? The Ark could have been their bat toy. But my brothers... You are not looking at the positives. Sure we are. We're positive. We're not going in. But I know we can bring the Canaanites to their knees. Yeah, and they'd still be taller than us. Why, next to those Canaanites, we look, like, we look as small as grasshoppers. The only thing small is your faith. I'd go in a second, Caleb, but it's my feet. Lately, I've been having problems with them. Really? Yeah. Every time I come against a big enemy like this, they want to turn and run away. Well, what about me? Don't forget, I've got a wife and a mother-in-law at home. And you don't think you should leave them? No, I was hoping they could go in my place. <laughs> okay, so maybe the Canaanites are bigger than us, and maybe they are tougher. But you are forgetting one thing. God is on our side. Yeah, but didn't he free us from Pharaoh's bondage? Yes. And didn't he part the Red Sea? Yep. And didn't he feed us the manna every day? Yes. Then I say we can trust him for this, and Joshua agrees with me. Okay, Caleb, we've talked it over. And there was one question we just had to ask ourselves. Are we mice or are we men? And your answer? Got any cheese? cheese? Uh, all right, go ahead. Stay here and look at the negatives. Live in fear. Don't take that which the Lord has given to you. But I know one day Joshua and I will march triumphant into the promised land. But what about the Canaanites? You'll still look like grasshoppers next to them. Maybe. But we'll, we'll be two grasshoppers who serve a mighty big God. And now we'll have our affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now we will have our offertory song, Show Us How to Love.
Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Send your Holy Spirit to unify your church. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts to reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us heal your creation from abuse and misuse. We thank you for the rain, and we ask that you, you would continue to supply favorable weather conditions as you see we need. Give all who are hungry food to survive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give wisdom to our congregational leaders and medical professionals as they determine how to move forward during the pandemic. Help a vaccine to be found. Help us look for the welfare of others over our own agendas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wherever we as the people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give us hearts for justice and empathy. Guide leaders at all levels and in all places. Keep safe all who serve in the military and work in areas of conflict and danger. We thank you for the safe return of Kirby, Jeff, Ryan, Sergio, Jacob, and pray for all National Guard members, police officers, and other call to duty because of the riots in the Twin Cities and other areas of our nation. Send your spirits to calm the tension, open hearts to communication and empathy, and bring justice for all affected. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Thank you for the gift of Elliot May Clapton to her parents, Samantha and Tony. May this new life be an example of renewal and light to her family and our community. Bless nurses, doctors, long-term care workers, and all who care for those in need. Give healing and peace to all who suffer in any way. Especially do we remember Joan, Howard, Eleanor, Betty, and Cheryl, and all others who are isolated to their rooms at nursing homes, assisted livings, and senior housing. We lift up those in need of healing. Bev, Brenda, Jerry, Mark, Gail, Marlis, Ken, Aaron, Anders, Matthew, Jim, Paulette, Daryl, Bennett, Christian, Grayson, Matt, Clifford, Abe, Paul, Verdon, Lauren, Larry, Natalie, Betty, Angela, Linda, Bella, Janice, Alice, Isaiah, Regine, Dorothy, Terry, Calvin, Michael, and those we name silently in our hearts. Strengthen all caregivers and their families. Help us to appreciate all they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Guide our congregation and our synod as together they, are, they work to bring a new shepherd to lead us here at First English. Give us wisdom and patience and help all to work together for the good of this congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and as we forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now for the benediction. May Christ, the wisdom and power of God, and the source of our life together, keep you united in mind and purpose, created for community and better together, and may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace as a community of faith, and let your light shine. Okay, we will. Our ascending song, Walk in the spirit of love. You want to do that? I'm going to sing it again. And now. Uh...